Addis Ababa Children's Classics, The Emperor's New Clothes. Once upon a time, there lived an arrogant and vain emperor in a faraway kingdom. This emperor loved clothes and spent all his money for chic clothing so that he always looked good. He spent most of his time in front of the mirror trying on new clothes. How do I look, Hat Taylor? Does it fit me? Of course it does, my emperor. Whatever you try on fits you well. The emperor's kingdom was a very fun place to be. There were colorful fabrics, accessories, and souvenirs sold in the market. One day, two con men came by to the market, and they introduced themselves as weavers who produce the world's best fabrics. And of course, they knew the emperor's desires for new clothes and unique fabrics. They immediately started a rumor in the market. The rumor said that the clothes they make with their special fabrics had a very important specialty. People who were not fit for their jobs and the ones who were fools could not see these clothes. Of course, the emperor immediately heard about this rumor. Amazing, amazing. If I wear these clothes, I will be able to tell immediately which of my stuff really deserves their title. And also I can differentiate the stupid from the wise. Call these tailors immediately! So the fake weavers came to meet the emperor. I want you to make me a magnificent suit from the most unique fabric you have. If I like it, I would pay more than you ask for. But if I don't... Do not worry, your highness. We will make a suit for you that is truly as unique as it can be. And that has no match. Your Highness, do you prefer a color or should we choose? Uh, you choose and start to work immediately. They will make a payment for your initial costs. The weavers immediately set a workshop and supposedly began to work, but there was nothing to be seen. They asked to purchase golden threads and finest of silk and all kinds of jewelry, but they put all that they received in their bags and worked until late on the empty loom. The emperor was curious and wanted to see how the weavers were going with his new suit, but he felt insecure and anxious about the fact that fools and the ones who were not fit for their jobs cannot see the suit. Hmm, actually I have nothing to worry about. Still let me send my most trusted minister. He is very wise and also is my best minister. So the good-hearted and honest minister came into the room where the two con men were working on the empty looms. He opened his eyes wide, but could it really be that in fact he really couldn't see nothing? He couldn't tell anyone. The two con men asked the minister to come closer. Please tell us, sir, have you ever seen such beautiful designs in such magnificent colors before? Um, well, I have to be honest with you, truly, I have not seen anything like these designs and the colors, they're incredible, our emperor will love it. All that being said, the minister thought to himself, I am either a fool or I am not worthy of a minister to the emperor. With no other option, he left the room without saying anything. The emperor curiously waited for his minister's comments. Finally, the minister approached the emperor and began to tell him about the beauty of the design and the incredible colors of the suit. The emperor was very happy. This way, the weavers could ask for more golden threads and silk which of course they put in their bags. There was not a single thread to be seen in the loom, but still the weavers kept on working. 
After some time had passed, the emperor sent another trusted minister to see how the progress was going and if the suit was ready. The minister also had a hard look at the room, but because there was nothing else than an empty loom, he too could not see anything. Such a beautiful fabric, right? The minister began to think hard. I am definitely not a fool, but I think I am not fit for my work. This is very bad, but I shouldn't tell anyone. Returning next to the emperor, the minister also began to praise the suit he could not see. And he added how mesmerized he was by the beauty of the colors and the unique design of the suit. The emperor, of course, was very happy that he could not wait to see it. Everyone in the kingdom was talking about this magnificent fabric. Everybody knew that only the wise could see it. Finally, the king wanted to see the fabric too. So he took his ministers with him and went into the room where the weavers were working. Working hard on the empty loom, the shifty conmen saluted the emperor. Both of the ministers began to talk before the emperor. Well, it is truly something absolutely priceless, right? Yes, yes, the more it is woven, the better it looks. Look at this design and colors. My emperor, what do you think? The emperor took a long and hard look at the empty loom and of course thought that everybody else could see the fabric. What does this mean? I can't see anything. It's impossible. Am I a fool or am I not fit to be a king? These were the thoughts of the emperor, but the words came out differently. Wow, so beautiful, so exquisite, the most magnificent thing I have ever seen. The ministers next to him, they of course had to support their emperor by saying, Wow, it is so beautiful and exquisite. The con man suggested the emperor to wear this new suit in the upcoming celebration. And the emperor had no choice but to accept. The whole kingdom was waiting anxiously to see the emperor's new suit. Everybody was praising the weavers. The emperor also awarded the weavers with a medal and gave them the title of the Secret Weavers of the Palace. One day before the big celebration, the two conmen worked all night long until sunrise. And everybody saw how much they worked to finish the new suit of the emperor. In the morning, the emperor gathered his most trusted men and came next to the weavers. Your suit is ready, your highness. The two conmen put their arms up, supposedly showing something. They said, these are the pants, the jacket and the cape and showed one by one the non-existent clothing. The emperor and his men couldn't say a word. They're all as light as a spider's web. One thinks that he's wearing nothing, but that is the biggest specialty of this fabric. Your Majesty, please allow us to dress you this suit ourselves. Can you please kindly take off your clothes? The emperor took his clothes off and they supposedly began dressing him up. Well, actually, they pretended to. Finally, one of the conmen tied his cape. The emperor turned right and left in front of the mirror, then turned around and looked at his men. Everybody began to clap. Oh my yeah, emperor, look at these colors. Wow, it's so beautiful. That is these colors. Amazing. The emperor looked at himself in the mirror once again. Because he had to look like he was admiring how good he looked. Yes, I think it really looks good. Okay, I'm ready then. 
The Empress men pretended they were holding the tail of the cape, but they weren't supposed to make it obvious that they weren't seeing anything. So they all went out. All the people on the streets began to yell about how incredibly beautiful the Empress' new suit was. Nobody dared to say that he wasn't wearing anything, because if they did, they would either lose their jobs or get called a fool. Right at that moment, a kid in the crowd yelled, "But the king isn't wearing anything!" The king, his ministers, soldiers, and the people froze for a second. Look, look! The king is naked. These were the words of an innocent young child. Only he could tell the truth of such situation. Then the child's father called out, "It's true! The king hasn't got any clothes on. He's naked." In the end, everybody gathered their courage and began to yell, "The king is naked! The king is naked! The king is naked!" <laughs> The king had come to terms with the ugly truth, but did not make it obvious, and carried on with his head up high. And of course, the ministers carried on pretending to carry his cape. <laughs> The king just walked on by like nothing had happened. The two weaving conmen had already left the very proud king's country, taking away with them the precious stones, fabrics, and of course the golden threads.